here's what's really going on here. And this goes back to the curfew thing with Mayor Reed. It goes back to the federal government sending Montgomery faulty masks. It really sums up everything that we've talked about because it is a all-inclusive principle that people need to be made aware of. What's happening here is that people are panicking. And because they're panicking, what do you do when you panic? You want your instincts to take over because you're not in control and you hate feeling like you're not in control. Believe me, I get it. One of the most common nightmares that I have, you're getting a little insight into Caleb Colquitt's subconscious, so, you know, uh, that's a scary place to be, but here it goes. One of the most common nightmares I have is I'm on a really crazy road that's like, you know, looks more like a roller coaster than a road and I'm having to drive this thing. And I hate that because I feel like I'm not in control. I understand that fear. That anxiety has been something I've had to fight for the past couple of weeks too. I mean, I've not left my house in 17 days. I've never done that before. And so everybody feels like they're not in control, but here's the thing about that. It's kind of like hitting a patch of ice. And this is something that Alabamians will really relate to hitting a patch of ice when you're driving. Your first instinct is to slam on the brakes and steer in the other direction. There's literally nothing worse that you could do because if you're not moving and you do slam on the brakes and you steer in the direction of the skid, what's going to happen is you're going to wind up on the side of the road or worse, in a tree. And you don't want that. Even though your instincts tell you gain control, slam on the brakes and turn in the direction of the skid, or sorry, turn in the opposite direction of the skid, what you should actually do is slowly ease off of the accelerator just a little and steer into the skid. That's actually what you're supposed to do. Your instincts are tricking you. And because a lot of people, they hate that feeling of not being in control, what they do is they jerk the steering wheel as fast as they possibly can. That's what's happening here with the curfew. That's what's happening with trying to rely on the federal government. They want somebody to restore their sense of normalcy and control. But the thing is, in their anxiety, in their panic to do that and to grab onto that steering wheel, they're not asking the question is, okay, is what I'm doing actually helpful? That's the reason people are praising the curfew. That's the reason people are straight up begging Governor Ivey to take away part of their liberty because they believe the stay in place thing is going to help them. But the thing is, it's just not. The stay at home orders are not something that have been proven to be helpful. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at this graph. So this was one that was used by the White House just a couple of days ago at one of their press briefings. This is adjusted for population, so this is per capita. This is not total uh, population, unless you think that New York and New Jersey are outliers because they're just big population centers, which, of course, they are. What you're looking at here is a graph comparing all 50 states on the levels of confirmed cases of coronavirus. Now, some are a little higher than others, but they're all basically in that same sphere there at the bottom on the bottom right-hand corner, 48 of the 50 states are basically neck and neck. Two are gigantic outliers. That big blue line is the state of New York. That orange line is the state of New Jersey. Now, you may say, Caleb, what on earth does this have to, to do with stay-at-home orders? Well, you remember how I said that 40 of the 50 states had issued stay-at-home orders? Yeah, two of the states that have, New York and New Jersey. And not only did they issue them, they issued them back when the state was really not in all that much trouble. The state of New York on the 20th, the state of New Jersey on the 21st, long before their numbers got way out of control or went way outside the norm. Now, New York was up a little bit when he issued that. But the point is, You've got the two states that are massive outliers that have huge levels of confirmed cases of coronavirus. They both have stay-at-home orders. And you'll notice that all 10 of the states that do not have stay-at-home orders still there at the bottom. And you may also notice that even the states that do currently have stay-at-home orders, several of them 
did not just a couple of days ago. Most of the states issued these orders just a day or two ago. For example, Governor Abbott in Texas, I think it was just two days ago that he issued one. The state of Tennessee just issued one today, and yet they are part of the 48 states that do not have outrageous levels per capita of coronavirus, which pretty definitively shows that the stay-at-home order has nothing to do with whether or not this thing actually spreads at a ridiculous rate or not, because the only two gigantic outliers we have both have them. Ten of the ones that are not outliers don't. I'm not saying that it has absolutely no effect, because I don't have enough data to prove that, but it looks pretty dang conclusive that it's not having much of an effect, or at least not one that's discernible, based on this. You can't look at the data and tell me that it's something that actually helps or fixes things based on what we've got right now. There's no reason to issue a stay-at-home order, at least not right now, at least until we understand that it's something that actually works, and so far we have no reason to believe that that is the case. Maybe it does, I don't know, but... It sure as heck doesn't look like it, especially when you consider that New York and New Jersey have way more than everybody else, and relative to the other states, they had pretty early stay-at-home orders. So, you're going to have to come up with a different solution. Here's the thing. This is uncomfortable for people to hear. I, I know you don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But it's bad, and it's going to be bad. And there's really nothing you can do to make it not bad. There are things that you can do to make it less bad, but there's nothing you can do to make it not bad. And I know that that's something that we don't want to hear. I know that some that's something that in an America where we've been very, very blessed and we haven't had to deal with an epidemic like this in about 100 years, we've gotten very, very used to a life of much ease and comfort. And I think that's actually a good thing in, in a lot of ways. Maybe some drawbacks as well, but ultimately I think that that's a good thing. But the thing is, with that lack of perspective, we almost think that if we get exactly the right combination of actions and, and do exactly the right thing this way and we stay at home exactly the right amount of time, this thing's just going to go away. It's not. It's going to get bad no matter what we do. We can definitely do things to make it less bad, and that's one of the things that we've been talking about on this program for a really long time, one of the things that I've been giving you advice on, and I hope that it's helped. I think that it has. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. But ultimately, we have to accept the fact that this is something that is going to be pretty bad. And to make sure that we don't make it worse, or that we're not doing things that, at the very least, just don't have an effect at all. What we need to make sure that we're doing is asking ourselves the questions, okay, when someone proposes something that they think will help, is it actually going to work or not? Because if we're looking at things like stay-at-home orders and curfews, they've shown that they don't. In fact, they actually make the problem worse. At least curfews do. I don't know about stay-at-home. I don't think that you could definitively say that stay-at-home makes it worse. But the point is, let's not just blindly accept, that, oh, well, they're doing something. Look, some of these things that have, have been done, they might make you feel good. They might make you feel like you're in control, but they're not. Would you rather feel safe or would you rather actually be safe? Because there's a whole lot of people right now that it seems that they'd rather feel safe and they'd rather feel like people are doing things that help whether they actually are or not instead of asking the questions of okay but is it actually going to work that's the more important question we all need to be asking ourselves studies show that youtube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't this is especially true if she's exotic looking Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.